Okay, friends, uh, welcome to uh, part 5 uh, of our video presentation uh, on assignment 8. In the previous part, I showed you how you can export uh, or import uh, data uh, using Microsoft Excel from, uh, from your Microsoft Access database. And you were supposed to uh, import not only the table data, but also query data. Uh, in this tutorial, in this part of, of this video tutorial, I will show you how to analyze the data that, that you imported from Access. Okay, so I'll go through those sheets, and those are the sheets that you need to have with exactly the same names. So I'll go through those sheets one by one and tell you what kind of analysis this imported data was subjected to. Now, the first uh, the first uh, tab uh, or the first sheet, Excel sheet, is coaches uh, coaches values. So basically, uh, you know, this is a straight import from that uh, table that represents. Coach Mike's uh, valuation of picks, you know, where pick number one is valued at 3,000 points and the last pick is val valued as at 100 points. Now, there's one column added and this column will be used later. It's called relative value. Now, in this column, you express those points in percent, okay? And relative value is calculated for each of the, uh, for each of the point uh, value is calculated as false by dividing this point value by the total Number, uh, total number of points. So this is the total. You know, we sum up all those values, and here we, we divide 3,000 by this sum, okay, by this value right here. Now, why we do it? Well, you will see later on that we want to compare the system uh, developed by Coach Mike to your own system, the system that you will develop. Now, I told you that nobody really knows what those points represent. I mean, who knows, you know, what kind of scoring system Coach Mike used? I mean, in fact, he kept it secret, right? So because of that, we cannot compare points. Because you see, like, I mean, for example, Coach Mike places 3,000 points of value on pick number one. I mean, if I were to develop my own system, I could have said instead of 3,000 for pick number one, I will use, I don't know, 30, okay, for pick number one. And then instead of using 100 for, for pick number uh, 100, I will use one. Okay, so it will be the same proportion but different points. So which tells you that you need to convert uh, scoring systems into some kind of common units because you cannot compare uh, apples to oranges, basically. So in our case, you're con converting everything into percentages. Okay, so this is the conversion uh, approach that you're using. Now, the next three tables, uh, they calculate points uh, based on whether, uh, based on how many years following the draft a particular player uh, uh, spent in the league. Uh, for how many years he was in the starting team and for how many years he was in the all-star team. So let's start with in the league. So again, for each of the players, and that's that. this part is basically straight import from uh, Access. You know, you calculate the points for each of the players. So this player, number one, um, with the draft number one, uh, whose last name is Stuart, he spent three years in the league following the draft, and we assigned 30 points to it. Now note, we multiply three, one, you know, this sum by 10, because 10 represents weight. So basically we're saying, you know, we're placing a, uh, a weight of 10 on each of the score earned by a player in this particular dimension, which is uh, presence in the league. So Stewart gets 30, okay? And then the player that was 100th pick, he gets only 20 because he spent only two years. So 10 is the factor. Now, starting the year, it's the same idea, you know, you calculate points for each of the players, but you multiply it by 20, right? So the weight factor is not 10, as it was in the previous sheet, it's 20. Now, if you think about it, it makes sense. I mean, uh, for a player to be in the starting team is more valuable than just being in the league. I mean, it kind of makes sense from the theoretical standpoint. In fact, I would say that if somebody is in the starting team, it already assumes that he is in the league. Okay, so that's why the weight is 20. So each of the points earned here has a weight of 20. Now, all-star, the same idea, but the weight is 30. Again, makes sense. I mean, being in the all-star team is more valuable than just being in the league or being a starter in one particular team because all-star team means you're the best from all teams, not just the best from your team, something that would be reflected in that start in the year scoring. So in that case, the, the weight factor is 30, okay? And then uh, in the summary uh, table, what you do, uh, you basically add up all those points, so you have a total point for each of the player. And here, um, here you calculate a relative uh, score. In other words, you convert those point scores, you came up with those points, into relative values expressed in percentages. And again, the same kind of approach is used. Each value here, in order to calculate percentage, is divided by the sum 
of all points. And this is the sum of all points that you have in your system. So you see, for Coach Mike, the total was a bit different. Okay, So this is how you calculate uh, those things. Uh, and of course, you need to format uh, those cells as percentages. Now, uh, from, from that relative value, you convert those percentage scores into moving averages. Now, this is how moving averages are calculated. Now, look, uh, for player number one, who has this high score, the moving average is the same. For player number two, the mo moving average is the same. Now, starting player number three, the moving average means you sum up the scores expressed in percentages for this player and for the previous two, and then you divide it by three. So it's the average, right? The average of the three, including uh, the, the current player plus the two previous. Again, for this player, it's the average of the previous two plus the score of the player he, uh, himself, and so forth, right? You know, up to the last one. Okay. Now, why why we are doing those moving averages? Well, uh, we are doing it for something called smoothing because if you use relative values, there'll be like all those fluctuations, right? So it will have like all those fluctuations like this. Okay. Now, on the one hand, if you think about those moving averages, it 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 seems to be uh, like something that doesn't make sense. Meaning, why don't we just use actual values, right? Because in a way, we are distorting the reality by giving uh, a player a score that is not the real score. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because uh, you see, uh, w when you're developing your scoring system, when you're developing a chart, of course you're basing it on real players, right? The so you have the so-called uh, data-driven strategy of, for creating this scoring system. Now it's based on the real world, on the real data. However, you understand that this scoring system will be used in other real worlds, meaning by other teams in other scenarios, okay? So in that case, uh, you're not in really interested in values of individual players. You're interested in the overall pattern that emerges from your scoring system, the overall pattern. So that's why it's okay to use smoothing. In fact, it makes things much easier for other teams because they will see the overall scoring pattern as opposed to just looking at the scores of your players. So, so that's that's the value of science. You know, science means going from uh, uh, particular to general, creating generalizations, right? So that's why you're using uh, moving averages. You're trying to smooth smooth this curve, so you have like the overall idea clearly expressed. Okay. So that's why it may make sense to calculate those moving averages. And then in the chart step, you just put those uh, values side by side. So here we have values from Coach Mike expressed as percentages. And here we have your own moving averages. And you can create a chart by selecting all this data. And then you go to Insert. And uh, you select a Recommended Chart. It will already recommend this line chart for you. So if you press OK, you have it right here. And then you can modify uh, those uh, axes a little bit to make them look nicer. Okay? But I'll use this existing chart. By the way, there's something included, and you can, uh, th this line. So although this line is kind of smoothed out, it's not that smooth. So you may want to include this trend line. You see, that's what it does. It adds this overall trend for your own model. So it says which one, uh, trend for which line? Well, actual moving averages, OK? Now, this is, this is your scoring system expressed by the orange line. Maybe you can include a legend here if you want. And this is Coach Mike, right? So what you need to think next, you need to look at those two scoring systems uh, you know, and, and compare them. So what's the difference between your line that you're proposing that seems to be something like this and uh, the value of Coach Mike? So this is where you need to write your interpretation and make recommendation to the, to the team management. You know, what's the difference between your scoring system? What did you find as a result of your analysis? How does your finding compare to what Mo Coach Mike has been doing or, or, or what Coach Mike recommended? And what is your overall recommendation? How do you think the team should value uh, those draft picks? Uh, okay, friends, so this concludes uh, part five of our video presentation on assignment eight. Uh, thank you for listening.